Okay, we're before we go into the welding table there, the last thing we're doing to this body here, besides we're gonna we're gonna bring our rotary burr, which will take the seam and any burrs off of there so that our blocks slide in when we get ready to fit those up. But before we go into there, we're actually gonna put a countersink or a chamfer, a heavy chamfer on that hole in the bottom there. Um, so this is a real old extended uh, chamfer tool here and a little bit of uh, regular tap fluid really kind of cuts it really, really nice. Yeah, it looks pretty good in there. All right. It's a real quick operation. Okay, we're we're in the welding section now. Come in here because we're going to actually be joining our components together. And we have the body which uh you know, is in the center section here. We have this block. This block is right there. And we have the pin. All right. Now this drawing here, this exploded drawing, you can see here's the pin, the block, the tube. The block, the pin, and the tube. Both so we're going to have we're going to have uh two units of course they're not they're not all ready to go in there yet because we still got to put some radiuses on the corners here to get them fit in there and we also have to um, take some burrs out of there and also this uh, weld seam at least dress it off to the width three quarters of an inch in there all right so the, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go find my uh, my rotary burr, bring in the air hose, and I'm gonna go ahead and dress up the inside of the tube to where I know that this slides in across the welded area, across those two holes with all the burrs rolled in, and, um, and also the ends, and making sure that the block will fit in the start of the, the tube there. Okay. Okay, it really doesn't take that long to dress up one end. First off, I want to I want to hit both sides of this. I'm not going to bother chamfering that because we got to fit to where we can push it through, and we don't really need a, a break broken edge to it. We, we're just going to have the one end sticking out, and the other end's going to get welded. All right, and. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna roll it until we got something that looks like the radius that's in the corner there. We're gonna have clearance for it. Once we do one, we'll start knowing how much we actually gotta put on there. That's looking pretty good. It doesn't have to be butt tight, okay? It could have a little bit of play in there. Okay, we're coming down to <clears throat> fitting our second to last one here. We went in and we deburred all of these. I did change paper here. The other piece of paper I had was uh, uh, pretty worn. Had a little digit in there. It was kind of our bed after a war for quite a while. I 
have like a minimum and a maximum that uh, I I have fit them to. <clears throat> I'm taking one of these at a time because as I weld these ends on, I'm going to be setting them in here so that I know which one and where they fit. All right, so I knew that fit fit in better that way there. Eh, it fits in pretty good either way, but some of them only fit better one way. Um, okay, we've got the vise set up with a couple pieces of strapping in here because the depth I wanted off the bottom I needed to have a 30 second uh, more uh, height in here to hold this in a little farther I put one spring down in the bottom there kind of bent you just take one of these and you bend it back and forth and it creates a, uh, a bar spring all right then uh, then this piece here can be put in here and that holds the height and then we can do the welding so what I did and this one here goes into here so here's the uh, the end we're going to put in there, and that's the face we want to stick out. And we hold it right down in there, like that. <clears throat> Alright, let's bring you in here. There you go. All right, now we do have to we do have to have a ground clamp on this. It works a little better. Nice big ground clamp. Grabs one side of the vise there. Okay, now the reason why I made them the length I wanted because I knew that this was going to set just slightly proud here and I mean I do have rod that I can fill with but if I can do a uh, fusion weld just taking the TIG torch and rolling around one pass around making it nice and clean um, it, it may be a little bit better looking job. Okay, here's um, purging the gas a little bit. First uh, weld of, of the day. Now I'm not gonna be using any of the filler rod on this, uh, this weld here. I'm just gonna start, start here and go around counterclockwise, which has been my most comfortable position here. And actually, as I say that, I'm trying to find a position sitting here in front of the cameras. Uh, sometimes the cameras, you know, they get put in place so that uh, you can, I can get to show you something, and and uh, and I leave out the comfort zone for me sometimes. Anyhow, let's give this a shot. I initiated there, and then once you got a bond on the base material underneath, and then I just stay. I stay as tight as I can to the slug in the middle so I don't roll off the edge too much. And I just come back to where I started at. And then let off. Alright, and that joins that pin to the block. Okay, here we're going for the other side <clears throat> that'll give us a pair to go into the the framework or the tube all right
All right, there's a set. <clears throat> All right, we've got one that's walled together here. We've already went through that. And let me see if I can give you a shot at the ends. You can see how flush they are. And the rosette welds. They're called rosette welds because instead of spot welds because we're actually welding a hole, joining the material, washing in from the sides of the hole, washing down into the bottom, and then backfilling that hole. And that's called a rosette weld, where you reach in a hole and weld your way out. All right, um, nice and flush on each end, and these are in line with each other. All right, now how do we get it that way? All right, so this is this is how I set this up. I have I have several sets of V blocks, but I I use these out in the shop here. I don't do any splatter type welding with them, but I do use them on on occasion when it comes to setting up something that I want to TIG weld. And I drop in. the uh, trunnion block with the trunnion shaft sticking into the V, holding it against the side there. And I'll do the same thing for the one on this side. And what this does, this lets me locate a, a perfectly square hold on both of these trunnion blocks and shafts so they are straight in line with each other and they'll align each other side to side with the tube itself okay I hold them down so that both of these are flat on the table now I know that they are true as far as the the uh, the 90 degrees to each other that one block is not like this or this in the body there the fit the fit aligns it well enough right there now I need to because this face around the block is actually holding the block flush with the outside of the tube we machined the tube square on the ends and then drilled the whole square in the axle, then welded the rosette welded that in there. Now we're putting these together and completing the match of alignment. So, I better if I hold this off the end of the table here a little bit. All right, so I take one of my uh, Bessie clamps here and I go ahead and I finalize the finalize the squeeze on everything so that I see that my faces right here are a hundred percent against each other and now I know that those trunnions are locked in there nice and tight okay also I don't really want to put a ground clamp I mean I could put a ground clamp like right here on the part or like this on the part okay but when you're holding things really tight all together you can you can actually put a ground clamp out here on your clamp and you'll you'll transfer it through without uh, an arc uh, if you have a loose contact somewhere between your your ground strap and here you will get an arc through that but by holding this hundred percent tight with the uh, the Bessie clamp and stuff like that I've never had an arc on it and it leaves this free and open for me to get in here and wall this up all right now I'm going to get set up so that I can bring you in close and I'm going to show you how I weld uh, my rosette welds. I'll show you how I get in there and get that done. Okay, uh, I'm getting ready here and uh, of course here I'm getting the best for the angle shot for the weld and also for the distance and you can see I've bent my rod in, in, in a short length right there because here I put myself out and I'm gonna have to reach in here like this and actually get um, get the rod to add in the puddle there when I when I get it going all right <clears throat> let's see if I can do this so that uh, we got optimum uh, uh, video for you
Okay. You take and you build up your heat, and then you gotta wash your puddle down in the bottom, and then you gotta circle around. You make sure it all gets down in there. And then after that, then you can backfill your puddle until it fills up and then you shut off. I was directly overhead, so I don't know how full I actually <clears throat> filled that. Oh, I did pretty good. I did pretty good. Now I know how uh, Jody at WaldingTipsAndTrick.com uh, has got to stand on his head to get some of those shots he has. All right, we might dab a little bit more in there, and then we're going to roll it. We're going to do a couple here, and then when I roll over to the side where it's a little bit easier to see, um, I'll, I'll bring it back in to see if we can get a little different angle and a different perspective on uh, walling up the rosette, and actually get the uh, get the camera that can look into the puddle, maybe looking down down into the hole a little bit better than what I captured uh, just a few seconds ago. Okay, hopefully um, we get a good shot here. Looks like a good camera angle here. And I think I can really reach in here and I find something to prop my arm up on. Okay. Yeah, I think that's going to that's going to be pretty cool right there. All right, initiate it. Now Usually I go around and kind of get it to open up a little bit because trying to get down in there sometimes the first and you just stick with it a little bit. Don't gun it. If you see it drop down in there, now you get it joined. Don't try to floor it. Just be patient and let it melt in there. If you don't join that down in there, then you have no bond between the upper tube and the block you're trying to weld in there. Okay, just going to ease it around. There we go. Okay, the other one was just a little bit bright, I think. And this is a different setting on the camera. Eliminate the green. And we're going to give it another try because I think it came out a little bright. And we want to see if I can eliminate some of the brightness with this setting here. Alright, and also give you a better view of it. Okay. Same as before, we just ease into it, we're just kind of like melting the mouth there. Okay, we're going to try to dip one side in here. There we go. Just not rushing it. And it finally pops in, okay? Now we know we're bonded to the inside. And just throwing up the hole and that looks pretty good I know I'm not trying to cap them out farther because then that's just that much more work you have to do there we go looks like I got a little contact on my tungsten there okay the bottom uh, rosette welds on on the bottom of the box tube are the easiest to get to because there's no interference here so now we might be able to get a pretty good or decent uh, view here uh, let me give it an attempt here and get my lead on the right side of my foot pedal here okay There we go. All right, uh, we're getting ready to go back in the other room there, and uh, we're going to start machining the, the in 
supports for the tube itself, but we're just rolling these around. On the sander. Kind of just making sure that any of these uh, spot welds aren't uh, protruding out past the surface and kind of dressing it all off, keeping them kind of clean. We'll still deburr down inside here with the rotary burr. We haven't got we haven't got time yet to sit down and do that, but it'll be the process before we get in here, especially uh, to make that center tube to support the wall. And that tube is to keep it from compressing, and the bolt is to keep the axles in, but also from it spreading. This is your vertical load, and if this doesn't spread or collapse you'll maintain the integrity of your vertical support. And that's what makes these rollers stronger.